This lecture used to be called Facial Fractures, but it now goes by the more fancy title Key Concepts in Mid-Face Trauma. We're really going to be talking about the key fractures of the face. We'll start by discussing the Lefort classification. Even though it's over 100 years old, it still has potential pertinence when we're discussing facial fractures. Then we'll spend most of the lecture time talking about the seven critical fractures of the face, the fractures that should be emphasized in your dictation every time, even just to say that they are absent. We'll spend a little bit of time talking about common fracture complexes at the end of the lecture. One of the most important concepts when you are dictating a case for mid-face fractures is to avoid the laundry list of fractures, mentioning one fracture over here, another fracture over there. What you really need is an organized structure, and that's why I use the seven critical fractures of the face as my pertinent negatives when I'm dictating a negative examination. When you do have fractures, it's important to rank them by their clinical importance. You shouldn't start with fractures of the nasal bone or septum when there are fractures, say, of the orbital floor that might need to be repaired surgically. I think it's useful to organize complex fractures according to the fracture planes. That's actually an important concept. We talk about fracture lines, but fractures aren't lines. Fractures are planes. They may be curved planes, but they're planar, not linear. If you think about fractures as fracture planes, then it's easy to see how one fracture leads into the next, and you can sort of follow logically across the face or across the skull base and follow the fracture plane. It's important to understand common fracture complexes so that when you see some of the fractures within a complex, you know to look for the other fractures within that complex. Also, it's important to know what the surgically relevant information is about each of the critical fractures. That is, what does a surgeon need to know in deciding, for example, whether or not to repair an orbital floor fracture? Let's begin with a discussion of the Lefort classification system. Lefort was a French pathologist who was working more than 100 years ago. He took cadaver skulls and dropped bricks on them and kicked them in the face and then dissected out what the fracture lines were that resulted from that trauma. The Lefort classification relies on what we now would consider fairly limited velocity trauma. It's not clear how much the Lefort classification has utility in modern trauma, in which we send ourselves flying through windshields and motor vehicle accidents, or flipping ATVs and landing on our faces. Lefort never had to deal with those levels of trauma. However, we sometimes encounter fractures that fit the Lefort classification, and it's a convenient way to convey a very complex fracture in just a few words. Let's begin by describing the three types of Lefort fractures and drawing them onto this skull. A Lefort I fracture runs across the lower midface and separates the upper alveolar ridge from the rest of the skull. You'll see that it traverses through the maxillary sinuses and across the midline where it involves the nasal septum. A Lefort II fracture comes up through the midface, through the floor of the orbit, across the medial orbital wall, and then across the bridge of the nose, and then out the other side. A Lefort III fracture goes through the zygomatic arches, through the lateral wall of the orbit, up into the orbital roof and across the glabella before coming down the other side. 
It is important to understand that in order to invoke Lefort's scheme, you first have to separate the midface from the skull base. Lefort fractures are at their essence a separation of the alveolar ridge of the maxilla from the skull base itself. In order to do this, you have to sever the connections between the midface and the skull base. Those connections are the pterygoid plates. So in order to use Lefort's scheme, you have to fracture through all four of the pterygoid plates. You can go through the base of the pterygoids on one side, and that will take care of both of the pterygoid plates on that side. Officially, Lefort fractures should be symmetric and bilateral. However, in modern usage, we may apply a different Lefort fracture on one side and on another side, or we may say that Lefort fractures come in combination and aren't pure fractures of one type or another. For example, you might see in a dictation, there's a Lefort 1 fracture on the right, and there are Lefort 1 and 2 fractures on the left. Let's talk about those fractures through the pterygoid plates. Here is an axial image through those pterygoid plates, and you can see that there is disruption of the medial and lateral pterygoid plates bilaterally. When you see this, it's a good clue that you might be able to use Lefort's scheme to save yourself some time communicating what are otherwise quite complex fractures. Here's the same concept as shown in the coronal plane. You can see the fracture plane going through both medial and lateral pterygoid plates on both sides. Let's start with Lefort 1 fractures. Lefort 1 fractures run across the upper alveolus and separate the hard palate and alveolus from the rest of the midface. If it helps you remember it, this can be likened to a mustache. On imaging, what we see in coronal images is a fracture line that extends across the anterior walls of the maxillary sinuses and across the septum. And you can see both the posterior and medial walls of the maxillary sinus involved, as well as the septum. And you can see this symmetric fracture continue out the other side. Now, Lefort 2 fractures. Lefort 2 fractures go through, up and around the nose and can thus be likened to an oxygen mask. Here's an example in coronal plane. You can see the fracture lines coming through the maxilla as, just as the Lefort 1 fractures did, but now we're going to go up through the orbital floor on both sides. And if, as we come more forward, you can see the fracture lines extend through the medial orbit and across the nasal bridge. This patient also has Lefort 1 lines further down. Lefort 3 fractures are the full craniofacial dislocation the whole hand to the face. Here's an example showing fracture lines that extend through the zygomatic arches and then come through the lateral wall of the orbit, through the orbital roof, and in this case even disrupt the frontal sinuses as they come across the forehead. That is Lefort 3. This concludes part one of our lecture on mid-face fractures. We will start the next lecture focusing on the critical fractures of the face.